Parsha Vayetze. It focuses on 20 years of Jacob's life, the 20 years that he's outside the land of Israel. His father, Isaac, never left the land that Abraham had reached as God's promised land. <clears throat> In those 20 years, Jacob will marry two sisters, Rachel and Leah, as well as their handmaids, Bilha and Zilpa, become the father of 12 sons and a daughter, and with his father-in-law, Lavan, both serve as well as hastily depart. The beginning of our Torah reading has Jacob on the edge of departure from the Holy Land and ends on the edge of Jacob's return. I would like to focus in on a phrase, on a story, and teach a short piece of the beginning of the text and then do a short bibliodrama. And so the beginning of our Torah reading begins as follows. Vayetze Yaakov mi'abir Sheva. And Jacob <clears throat> went out from Be'er Sheva. Vayelech Harana. And he went towards Haran. So to give a little context, Jacob had been living in the Negev in the south of Israel in the desert. And he's now fleeing the place where he had lived because he had manipulated a birthright for himself and his brother Esav, from whom he had taken that firstborn privilege, said, when dad dies, I'll kill you. And mom says to dad, you got to tell Jacob to leave and go back and find a wife in my, in my home. And in fact, Jacob will wind up in Rebekah's brother's home, the home of Levan, where he will marry his cousins. All right, back to the story. Jacob is on the run. He leaves Beersheba. He's heading to the north of what would be the border today between Syria and Turkey, Haran, and now the drama. Vayifga b'makom. And he came upon the place. Vayelin Shamani lie down there, Kivaha Shamish, because the sun had come down. And he took from one of the stones of the place, and I'll pause. The word Hamakom, place, will be the motif word repeated over and over in this short telling. And he placed it under his head. And he lay down in Makom, that place. And he dreamt. Behold, there was a ladder planted in the ground. And its top reached toward the heavens. And behold, angels of God, Olim, go up, Veyardim bo, and come down. Vihine Adonai, and behold, the ever present one, Nitzav Alav, was standing before him, Veyomer, and said, Ani Yudhe Vavhe, I am the ever present one. Elohe Avraham Avicha, the God of Abraham, your ancestor, Velohe Yitzchak, the God of Isaac. Haaretz asher atashochevaleha, the land upon which you are lying. Lecha etnena ulzarecha, to you I will give it and to your descendants. Mind you, these are God's first words to Jacob, words that come to him in this moment of being in that place, asleep, dreaming. Verse 14. Vayazarecha kafar haaretz, and your seed shall be like the dust of the earth, Ufaratsta yama, spread to the 
east, spread to the west, the Kedma to the east, the Tzafon of Negba to the north and to the south. And you sh and all shall be blessed through you, all the families of the earth, Uvizar Echa, and your descendants. Those are the same words that God spoke to the call of Abraham. You will be a source of blessing in all the nations of the earth of the will be blessed through you. Verse 15. And behold, the third time of behold, I am with you. And I will protect you. And all your goings and your comings. On this land. I will not depart from you. Ad asher im asita et asher dibarte lach, until you have completed doing all that I have spoken to you. Vayikatz Yaakov Mishnato, verse 16. And Jacob ended his sleep. Vayomer and said, Now in the next eight words will come an entire book. Larry Kushner wrote an entire book of seven different commentaries on these next, how many words? Two, four, six, eight words. Achain. Wow. Yesh Adonai b'makom hazeh. There is the ever-present one in this place. Va'anochi lo yadati. And the I gets repeated. God was in this place, and I, I didn't know it. Verse 17. Vayira, filled with awe. Vayomar, he said, Ma no ra hamakom hazeh. How awesome is this place. Ein zeh. Ki im beit Elohim. This is no other but the house of God. V'zeh shar hashemayim, and this is the gate to heaven. Verse eighteen. Vayeshkem Yaakov aboker, and Jacob got up early in the morning. V'yikachet the heaven, and he took the stone, asher samer roshotav, and he placed that had been placed under his head. And he erected it as a steel. And he poured oil on the top of it. And he called that place Beit Ale, the house of Ale, the second most common name for synagogues in America. The first, B'nai Israel. The second, Bethel, my synagogue growing up in Phoenix. Beit El, Beth El. Here's what's interesting. It's Beit El. That's the first time the word El appears in this story. El was the name of the chief god of the Canaanites. Baal, El. It's the name of the local people for the supreme power. And so this place of his epiphany, he calls Beth El, Beit El. V'ulam Luz, previously the name was called Shim Ha'ir Rishona. Previously the city was called Luz, which can be an almond. And now I'm just going to read in the English a little bit the next few verses. Jacob then made a vow saying, if God remains with me, if God protects me on this journey that I am making and gives me bread to eat and clothing to wear, and if I return safe to my father's house. The Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have placed as a pillar, as a steel, Ye Beit Elohim, shall be a house of God. V'chol asher titenli aser t'ashrenu lach. And I will provide God with tithings. And so, let me just point out some salient features of this story. First to note is that when Jacob is on his deathbed, 
He calls Joseph and he says, I want to bless your two sons because he thinks this is the end. It's the blessing of Ephraim and Menashe that we evoke on Friday nights when we bless our sons. And when the old man, Jacob, now in Egypt, speaks with his son of Joseph before the blessing, he summarizes his life with two images. He tells of this moment of encountering God, and he tells of the death of Rachel, which is to say, this moment that we just visited is pivotal in Jacob's life, will endure for him at the forefront of his identity to the end of his life. But what is this moment? In what sense is it transformative? We will see next week the other pivotal story, his return, the wrestling with the angel, a name change. But it is this moment that Jacob will recount to Joseph as he talks to his beloved son about his own journey that leads him to the place of blessing. Now, one aspect is he's getting ready to bless Ephraim and Menashe, and part of that blessing is that they will be part of the chain spiritually between his ancestors and himself. And the blessing here is where God will say to him, I am the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. And so this is the moment of God's call to Jacob, the recognition that Jacob has indeed received the blessing from Isaac to be the spiritual heir of covenant, and that gives context to Jacob's blessing to his grandsons. And the other is, here's what he's promised. The ground on which you're lying, I will assign to you and your offspring. Your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread out to the west, the east, the north, and the south. And so that's a second reason. Because the blessing that Jacob will be giving to his grandsons is the blessing that they will inherit the land. But there's a third. And that is... All the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you and your descendants. That is truly to be the heir of Abraham. That was the call to Abraham. And what here God says to Jacob in this first appearance is, I am not only the God, the voice that spoke to your ancestors, but my charge is the same, that you will be a source of blessing. Not just you, but that will be who your children will be. Not just identified with this place, but being a source of blessing. And so now, a short bibliodrama to pull it together. And here's why I do a bibliodrama. I've done a lot of reading including in previous years and reviewing an entire book of seven commentaries on those eight words, which is to say there are so many possible ways of understanding Jacob's response when he seems to awaken from this dream and he will say, Achain, surely, wow, Adonai b'makom hazeh, the ever-present one was in this place. Va'anochi and I, lo yadati, I didn't know it. Va'yira, and he was shaken. He was in wonder, he was in fear. Va'yomer manorama komaze, and he said, how awesome, how awful, how is this place? This is no other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. What do those eight words mean when Jacob explained, exclaimed and explained 
awaking from his dream. Ah, chain. Ah. An olive. An olive has no sound. Chain. Yes. My first experience in waking from my dream, or was it a dream? You know, that experience through the night with my head on that stone, in this place, this place, this land that God had promised to my ancestors. My first experience was, ah, the same sound that I know will later be the first words that God will express to the entire people of Israel at Mount Sinai, Anochi, ah. My first exclamation as I awoke was, ah, because it knocked the air out of me. There are no words to describe other than to affirm Ah-chain, for chain means Cain, means yes. In this moment, in this place, in this surprise, I emerge in awe and in affirmation. But what is it that I'm affirming? Ah-chain, yesh Adonai. That indeed there is an ever present one. For unlike my ancestors, God had never spoken to me. Throughout my youth, I wondered in my mother's shadow, in my father's shadow, in my grandparents' shadow, who was I? And I couldn't help also but remember to ask, and who is asking? For I knew that there was a self, but I yearned for the grand self, for the all-encompassing self of yud Hey vav Hey, of my father's God and my grandparents' God. yud Hey vav Hey b'makom hazeh, is in this place. This place, the place where I was, my roadside attraction. When I went to sleep last night, I was terrified. Terrified that my brother would find me. That he would disavow his vow and kill me as soon as he could. And in the midst of the night with the sounds of the desert, I couldn't sleep. Or did I? In the midst of the night alone, my head was elevated, but by a rock, not by a soft wool that I was used to sleeping on. I was on the ground, this place, this ground. And it was as if I was absorbing this ground, the spirit, the holiness, more the quality of promise. But I'm leaving, afraid. Unable to sleep. Anochi. Anochi. That's the first words that I know on some prophetic level. The first words that God will utter to my descendants. Anochi. I am. For the self may contain God. But the self is not God. Anochi, that is the same sound that begins with achain. Ah, yes. Anochi, I am present. Lo yadati, I didn't know. I didn't know that I too could receive the sound of God's presence. You see, it's not the words that I can describe. It's not words that the people would later hear, my 
my descendants at Mount Sinai, what they would hear is the ah of God's presence, that olive that has no sound. It was only my awareness that as I lay on that stone in this place, that my descendants like me are indeed capable of experiencing God's presence. And to experience God's presence is indeed to be a receiver from Abraham of a call. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. But what was added in my experience that was not said to Abraham were the words, Vizar Echa, and your seed. You see, in this moment as I awake, I awake to know that I move forward toward a future in which it's not only me that will bless, but my descendants on behalf of that ever-present, unable-to-express presence of Anochi. And so, in this moment, I am awakened. Awakened not just to a new day. Awakened not just to know I was in a dream or not. But awakened to know that God is bamakom in this place. In any place in which we awaken to the stillness of the ever-present sound of the olive. And now I leave Jacob and as a descendant of that moment, knowing that it rippled forward across generations to those who became and were identified with Jacob and with his wives and his children, to be Zar Echa, to be among those who are his descendants. Ribbono Shalom, Master of the Universe. May we be present to know that wherever we go, we are headed toward a return. Wherever we go, we are also present. Present wherever we are aware that there is both the ah, the presence beyond words, chain, who affirms us and affirms life. And in that affirmation, may we know that we are called to be a bracha, a source of water, a source of humility, a source of life and blessing to all of those around us. For through us, God is present. May we live with such humble awareness. Amen.